After a rainy morning in Columbia, Missouri, the skies have cleared and we're ready for baseball, but you can tell they're baseball players and not tarp rollers. They eventually got it off, and the sun is out over a baseball-ready Taylor Stadium here in Columbia as the Tigers take the field. We welcome you to our broadcast on a Sunday afternoon alongside former big leaguer Brian McRae. I'm Nate Gatter. And Brian, for Mizzou, the story of this series has been just not quite enough. Lost 4-3 on Friday, lost 2-1 on Saturday. Florida now looking for the sweep on Sunday. The big fly has gotten it done for the Gators, capitalizing on Mizzou mistakes. The Gators haven't hit a lot this year, but when they do hit, they've been able to get some key home runs that have been able to propel them. And then with the solid pitching that they've had, they've been able to keep their heads above water even though guys aren't swinging the bats well. Mizzou is just a pitch away, a play away from maybe eating this series. They have to get something going today. They, they battle back, and that's something that this team has been able to do, but not enough. And it's frustrating to be one run down at the end of the game over and over and over again. On Friday night, Trey Harris's would-be game-time homer came up just short on the warning track for the final out. On Saturday, Missouri looked good early. The defense didn't make a single error all game. Mizzou took the early 1-0 lead in the second, but that Jonathan India home run propelled Florida to a 2-1 lead, and that was all the help Brady Singer needed. He threw a complete game three-hitter, giving up just the one run and backing up Alex Faedo, who had a quite outstanding outing on Friday in his own right. Tough for Mizzou having to face two great arms like that. And the Tigers have made a change in their Sunday rotation. Taking the mound this afternoon will be Bryce Montes de Oca, junior from Lawrence, Kansas, who's been used almost exclusively as a midweek starter so far this year, making his first start on the weekend in his career this afternoon and facing a Florida lineup that's now starting to heat up. Big league arm, big time stuff. He wants to prove that he is a weekend starter and he's going to get the opportunity today. Deacon Lippett will lead it off for Florida. Close to the same lineup for the Gators as they ran out there yesterday. Lippett, India, Schwartz, Maldonado, and Rivera. Those first five. Kevin O'Sullivan really wants to see better production from the guys who were supposed to be the Gators' top players coming into the year offensively. It's been a down year for Florida all the way around. A little bit better this weekend at the plate. On the ground toward third, to an E. There's Samples again on the backhand toward the line, and again he makes the play. Saw in the open Alex Samples diving to his right to make a play yesterday. This one a little more subdued on the slide, but he gets Lippitt for the first out of the ball game. Mike Rivera is set to lead off the top of the second for Florida. The Gators have a 1-0 lead on the strength of a J.J. Schwartz solo shot in the top of the first. Florida is now homered in five straight games as a team. Mike Rivera took care of two of them on Tuesday night against Florida State. And then on Friday night in the series opener, a two-run shot to left off of Tanner Howe. The only home run that Hauk has given up all year. Said at the time, I hope Rivera sent somebody out to grab that baseball because that's one you might want to hang on to. Well, the Gators aren't hitting for much of an average, but they are able to hit the long ball. And when you can do that and have the pitching that they have, then it doesn't really matter. You don't have to hit 300 as a team to win ball games. You just have to come up with some key hits at times. And the home run is something that the Gators have been able to do this weekend that the Tigers haven't. Montes de Oca into his second inning. Pitched pretty well in the top of the first, just the one mistake to Schwartz that he deposited over the left field fence. See Mike Rivera's numbers there for the series, and Rivera heading well against Missouri is nothing new. Eight for 16 in his last five games against the Tigers. Rip toward third, Samples is there again. Three of the first four outs in this ball game have been Alex Samples at third base. And there have been some hot shots hit his way. He's been Missouri's best defender all weekend long over on the hot corner. Yeah, Alex has played well. He struggled a little bit a few weeks ago and, and sat a couple games. But since he's been inserted back into the lineup, he's done a good job at pretty much fielding everything that's come his way. Samples, a junior out of Bridgeport, Texas, junior college transfer, who had originally signed to play for new Missouri skipper Steve Beezer at Southeast Missouri. Switched his commitment when Beezer did, so to speak. 
0-2 now on Christian Hicks, Florida's shortstop. Highlighted him in the bottom of the first. Getting a lot more playing time at short than would have been expected before the year with all SEC performer Dalton Guthrie struggling with a shoulder injury, which has limited him mostly to DH duties when he does play. And Hicks has filled in admirably. 288 batting average is sought after on a Florida team hitting only 242 as a group. He's been asked to bunt, hit and run, move runners around. He's done a good job in, in this role. One, two. And we'll do it again as that one's into the seats down the left field line. One of the storylines coming into this series was Florida's poor offense. On Friday, the worst in the SEC, now second worst by batting average. Chop toward first. Sharp has it toward the line and takes it to the bag himself for the second out. And the flip side of that was Missouri's poor defense. Coming into the series and still now the second worst fielding team in the SEC by fielding percentage and by number of errors. But both teams have performed better than expected in that regard. Florida been a little bit better offensively than we might have expected. And Missouri has certainly been better defensively than it's shown in past weeks. Yeah, it's been a pretty clean weekend for the Missouri defense. Blake Reese the batter. I mean, Mizzou has pitched well this weekend. They played good defense. They just haven't been able to come up with a timely hit like Florida has. Two and zero on Reese, who's back in the starting lineup, playing third and in the seven hole where he was on Friday night. Only time he reached was on that hit by pitch. Three balls and no strikes. And a four-pitch walk to Reese. That's what you worry about a little bit with Montes de Oca coming in. Had 15 walks against 21 strikeouts. That's his first walk to go with one strikeout so far here this afternoon. And it's especially frustrating after two quick outs. Here's Ryan Larson, the lone senior who started this weekend for Florida. Reese moving on the first pitch, fastball high, Bonds throw, not in time. Reese steals his third bag of the year on as many attempts, and the Gators have a man in scoring position with two outs trying to double their advantage. The thing about Montez Dioka is he doesn't hold runners on well, so Florida knows that and took advantage and ran right away. Florida doesn't run a whole lot, only 48 stolen base attempts on the year. This now game number 29. That's middle of the road in the SEC, but the Gators are efficient when they do run. Converted 81% of the time, which is second in the league. And Reese gets himself into scoring position, a big 90 feet with two down. 2-0. Florida dugout thought that was low. Kevin O'Sullivan took... A couple of steps out onto the field from the first base dugout with his arms outstretched either side. Very demonstrative reaction to Keith Sanders, the home plate umpire. But it's two and one. Three balls and one strike. Might be wondering why. A guy who throws mid to upper 90s in Montes de Oca would go to the 2-1 breaking ball. But, Brian, you said there are a lot of times when Bryce actually throws his breaking ball more consistently for a strike than his fastball. I think sometimes he has a better feel and can throw that. If you're saying, what can you throw for strikes 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 times, Bryce would probably say his breaking ball. See what he turns to here, 3-1. Trying to hold this. 
Gators lead at 1-0. That one's ripped to left center, and it splits the gap to the track. Reese will score. Larson headed for second. The throw is cut off. The first hit of the weekend for the senior is an RBI double, and the Gators take a 2-0 lead. This offense looks like it's hungry for a sweep here in Columbia. Well, Larson got himself in a good hitter's count. 3-1, he was looking fastball. Another fastball elevated up by Bryce and shoots the gap in the left center field. Larson trades places with Blake Reese. Still a man in scoring position for Florida. And Nick Horvath, the batter. Almost hit him. First double for Larson this season. He had two home runs and a triple before his first double of the year. 1-0 now on the Gators center fielder. Sweeps are hard to come by anywhere, and especially in the SEC. And the Gators are doing what you need to do. Jump on a team early. Try not to give them any life at all. There's that breaking ball again behind in the count. This time for a strike. It's two and one. Florida looking for its second straight sweep of Missouri. Last year, the Gators took all three down in Gainesville. This would be the sixth straight win. for Florida over Missouri. Another curve and it's two and two. Missouri's only series win over Florida, which leads the all-time series 16 to four, was in 2015 here in Columbia when the Tigers took the Saturday and Sunday games from A.J. Puck and Dane Dunning. Strike three called on the curve. After falling behind 2-0, Monte Steyoka comes back with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back breaking balls to strike out Nick Horvath and holds the Florida damage at one more run. The Gators have scored a run each in the first two innings. The junior from Lawrence, Kansas, holds the damage there, gives his bats a chance, down 2-0 in the second. We're set for the second half. Northwest Missouri 46, Lincoln 33. The Bearcats start with a basketball. Moving left to right in their all-white uniforms with forest green trim. Far side to the left wing, Justin Pitts. His game-high 15 points. Zigzags into the lane. Kicks it right wing, Schneider. Might have gotten away with a travel. The Lincoln bench certainly thought so. Back to Pitts. Angles left wing with Lewis all over him. Hands off to Chris Abu Nadal. Rifles one to the right side of the key for Woods. Pick and pop action with Doherty. He drives underneath. Through contact from Maddox. No call, and he lost it out of bounds. Lincoln's basketball. Ben McCollum wondering... How that wasn't a foul. There was a lot of contact. 30 seconds into the second half, Lincoln has the ball down 46-33. Richie Lewis walks it up right to left for Lincoln. Blue Tigers in their road navy blue uniforms with white Lincoln cursive script across the chest. Right elbow to Chorus Maddox, top of the key Mason. Swings it left corner, Smith, who's bumped and fouled by Chris Abu Nadal. Jalen Smith led Lincoln with 10 points in the first half. Three of eight from the field and one three-pointer. Also had a left-handed dunk off of Richie Lewis alley-oop. Maurice Mason, Jalen Smith, Richie Lewis, DeCorus Maddox, and Anthony Verdur, the MIAA's leading scorer this year. The five on the floor for Lincoln to start the second half. 19-15 to play. Lincoln down 13. Verdur between the circles. Left-hand belt tie dribble. Angles near side to the left wing. Far side of right wing. Smith on the baseline drive. Left-hand finger roll, and he drops it in. No backboard. Jalen Smith got major elevation. His head as high as the rim, took contact from Brett Doherty and scooped it in around him. 46-35, the Lincoln deficit, defending the right hoop. Left wing, Chris Abu Nadal, 4-3. Rims around and out, and a foul called underneath on the rebound, looks like against Lincoln. It is a hold called against the Blue Tigers. Called against DeCorus Maddox, his second personal foul, first here in the second half on Lincoln, 18-46 to play. Blue Tigers down 11. And Nadal checks out 
for Northwest in favor of Ryan Welty, who hit a couple of threes in the first half. Inbound, left elbow, Anthony Woods drives right, goes up, and he's fouled by Mason on the layup. He'll shoot two, although he missed it short of the underside of the rim. Northwest is the second best team in the country in shooting percentage, nearly 53% this season, 44% from three, which is best in Division II. Woods puts up the first, misses off the back iron. Northwest now just five of eight at the free throw line, which is fitting because the Bearcats shoot just under 70% from the free throw line, which is 11th in the conference. Second free throw up, rattles in for Woods. He hits one of two, 47-35. Northwest Missouri up on Lincoln, 18-35 and rolling to play in the second half. Richie Lewis jogs it up over the timeline, right to left. Against Zach Schneider, angles left wing. Fires it back to the top of the key for Anthony Verdure. Looking baseline for Smith, but decides not to throw it. Now gets it to him far side in the right corner. Wants a clear out as he backs in against Woods. Into the lane, contact and a foul called. Zach Schneider reached around him, and he's called for the hold. Northwest Missouri fans in attendance not happy, and there are certainly more in the forest green than there are in the navy blue here at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. MIAA quarterfinals, trip to the semifinals on Saturday on the line. Lincoln down 12, 18-15 to play. Inbound to the right wing, Anthony Verdur. Maddox comes to set a screen, they bring a hard hedge. Left wing, Lewis for three, knocks it down. Richie Lewis hits his first triple of the game, just Lincoln's second on eight attempts, and the Blue Tigers are back within single digits, 47-38 Northwest, as the clock rolls past 18 minutes to play second half. Near side on the right wing, Zach Schneider. To the cop of key, Doherty. Hands off to Pitts. Back to Doherty, who hands it right back to him. Drives to the right elbow, throws up a floater. He's bumped and fouled by Lewis. Shot rims out, but Pitts will get two free throws. Lewis bumped him in the legs as he went by. Justin Pitts is only 5'9", 143 pounds. But he's won back-to-back -back MIAA Player of the Year awards. And he is as shifty, as agile, as crafty as they come. First free throw up and good. Close to a 50-40-90 season as well. 52% from the floor, 43% from three, 86% from the line on the year as he hits the second. Game high, 17 points for Justin Pitts. 49-38 Northwest up on Lincoln. 17-40 on a turning second half clock. Anthony Verdur near side of the left wing. Drives left around a Mason screen. Draws a switch on Ryan Welty. Drives baseline, right hand reverse. Trying to spin it up, no call. Rebound to Welty, poked away by Verdur and he steals it back for Lincoln. Top of the key, Smith. Fake the pass, pull up three. Too strong on the back iron and the rebound down to Anthony Woods for Northwest. Lincoln gets a couple of chances. Verdur and Smith both miss, and that's been the theme of the game for the Blue Tigers. Those two have combined for just 16 points on six of 20 shooting. Lincoln relies on that pairing for more than 55% of its points on the year. 17 minutes to play, Lincoln defending the right hoop, down 11. On the slip, Doherty underneath, throws it up with the right hand, and he's fouled, missed it off the right side of the rim, but Takoris Maddox whistled for his third personal. And two free throws coming up for Brett Doherty. Doherty, one of a couple of very poor free throw shooters who get a lot of minutes for Northwest. He shoots just 44% from the stripe. At the line to our right, Lefty lets it fly. Short. He's now one of three on the day. 6'7", junior forward from Omaha, Nebraska. Anthony Woods, also a starter, 6'2", senior guard, shoots just 49% from the line, despite the fact that he shoots 55% from the field and from the three-point line. Not many guys who shoot it worse from the free throw line than the three-point arc. Second free throw up, short, and the rebound down to Rod Allison, who checked in for Taurus Maddox after he picked up his third foul. Allison has two fouls, so he'll have to be careful. Lincoln has the basketball, down 11. Near side on the left wing, Richie Lewis against Zach Schneider. Bounce pass entry to the block, Jalen Smith spins baseline, left hand, hook, banks it in over Anthony Woods. Jalen Smith has a team high 14 points, and Lincoln is down 49-40, 16 and a half minutes on a rolling clock here in the second half. 